Hello, my awesome second grade artist. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make this Mexican folk art moon and sun drawing. So to start with, let's talk about folk art. Folk art is a type of art created by a cultural group of people, in this case, Mexico, and they aren't really trained, like they don't go to college to learn how to do this type of art. They just pass it down from generation to generation. So their grandparents may have taught them and their grandparents' grandparents may have taught them and they just pass it down. Let me show you something. This is a world map and we live over here on the continent of North America. We live in the country of the United States of America and Mexico is south of us. They are another country on our continent. So this is where this type of artwork comes from. And I'm gonna show you some examples. This is called Weech Hole String Art. So you see here, this says Weech Hole. It doesn't look like that would say Weech Hole, but that's a Spanish word, and so that's how you pronounce it. And this type of artwork is a folk art that's created using string, yarn, and beads. And you see here they made this beautiful sunshine. Isn't that pretty? This is another one. And on this one, you see it's also a sun and a moon. So there's the moon, and the moon has lots of cool colors. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. And the sun over here has warm colors. Let me go back and show you mine. So on this piece of artwork, we're gonna be using lots of elements of art. We're gonna use line, different kinds of line. We're gonna use shapes. We're gonna be making these shapes. We're gonna be making patterns. That's when we'll repeat shapes and lines and colors over and over again. And we're gonna really be talking about color because we're gonna have cool colors on one side of our picture and warm colors on the other. Cool colors are colors that remind us of things that are cool or cold, like ice and snow. And so when we think of those cool colors, we think of things that are blue or green or purple and all the different shades of those colors. And then warm colors remind us of things that are hot or warm, like the sun or like fire. You think of yellows and oranges and reds and even pink. Those are warm colors. So I'm gonna start by showing you how to draw this. For the materials for this, you need paper and you can either, you have two options. You can use watercolor paper or a very thick paper if you have it. So. I use watercolor paper because later I'm going to show you how to add water to your markers and make it almost like paint. If you have watercolor or a thick paper, you can do that. If you don't have thick paper, if you just have copy paper like you would put in your printer, you can just use crayons and markers to, to do yours because if you add water to a very thin paper, it'll just make a hole in it and it won't do right. But I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this with my watercolor paper. So here's my paper, I'm gonna show you first how to draw it. Now you can start with a pencil if you want and then later outline it. I'm gonna start drawing with a Sharpie. A Sharpie is a permanent marker and that means when water mixes with it, it won't run and bleed. So if you're gonna be using the water later, you need to make sure you use a Sharpie or a permanent marker. And I'm gonna start with a template. A template is just something that we use to trace to get an outline of what our shape will be. So it helps us. So I want a good circle. So find something in your house that is a circle shape that would fit in the middle of your paper like this. And then you're just gonna put it right in the middle and you're going to trace it. And that'll give you a good circle shape to begin with. Okay, so now we're going to divide our circle shape in half and have the moon on one side and the sun. I'm going to make a crescent shape and I'm going to use my finger first and kind of trace it. So I start at the top, I go down, curve, I come out where the nose is and back down. Tracing with your finger will help you. So I'm gonna start at the top, it goes in, it comes out where the nose is and back down. Doesn't that look like a moon shape? Then we're going to make the eyes. So the moon, moons are out at night, so let's make our moon like he's sleeping. So I'm just gonna make a line that curves down and that looks like a sleeping eye. We can put some eyelashes on it and it'll make it look even more like an eye. On this side, I'm gonna make an open eye because the sunshine is out during the middle of the day, all day long, and so 
You want to be wide awake sun. So I'm going to make an elliptical shape like a football. So I start here and I go down, curve, and then up. Doesn't that look like a football? Then we have to make the iris and the pupil. The iris is the colored part of our eye. So a curved line. You don't see the entire circle because the eyelid, the top and bottom eyelid cover it up. So you just see part of it. And then the pupil is the black part of your eye. So I'm gonna make a circle. And then when we look at eyes, we often see a little reflection. So I'm gonna make a little circle though that I'll leave white. And I can go ahead with my black marker and color in the pupil. And then we'll add some eyelashes. Let's add some eyelashes on the top and on the bottom. All right, now we need to make our mouth. We can have a big, happy, smiling sun and moon. So it's gonna be like one big smile. So I'm gonna start here and make a line that curves up. That's a happy one. Okay, and then I'll make these little marks here for the sides of the mouth. Okay, now you can leave it like that. You could make another curved line and put teeth. You could make lips. I think I'll make lips. Make these two bumpy lines. Half of the lip is on that side, half of the lip is on that side, and then the bottom. So you make your mouth look however you want it to look. And a lot of times in Mexican art, the sun and the moon will have these big cheek circles for cheeks. Just give us a little more shapes to color. Give us a little more variety to look nice. So make two circles. So now we're gonna divide our paper in half. So where your moon meets the top, you just go straight up. And where it comes down here, straight down. So now you have two sides. On the moon side, we're gonna make these lines that go horizontally across. I want you to think of different kinds of lines that you know. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna put three fingers down and that'll let me know where I need to start. I'm gonna make a curvy line. You do whatever kind of lines you like. You're the artist for yours, so you make yours look different if you want. It doesn't have to look like mine. I'm gonna put three more fingers and I'm gonna make a wavy line like the water. Doesn't this look like kind of like you're drawing the ocean? Three more fingers, and then I'll make a zigzag line. That's fun. Think of all the different kinds of lines you know. And, oh, I'm gonna do a loop-de-loop -loop line. That's fun. And I need one more. I think I'll do a straight line. I haven't done a straight line yet, so just straight across. This is horizontal when it goes across. So now we have all these shapes we've created in there. Now we're gonna do this side. So when we think of the sun, like if you draw a sun on your picture, you'll make rays that go out. They radiate all around your sun. So I'm gonna make a pattern of lines that go around. So a pattern, remember, is when you repeat a line or a shape or color over and over again. I'm gonna put three fingers and I'm gonna make a curvy line. Then I'm gonna put three fingers and make a straight line. Remember these radiate around. He's gonna be kind of diagonal. So curvy, I'm making a pattern, straight. Curvy, straight. Okay, so you see how the lines look different on each side, the direction they're going. Okay, now it's time to start adding color. So remember, if you have watercolor paper or a very thick paper like poster board would work, just use the rough side of the poster board. If you use the slick side, when the water hits that, it'll just kind of run off, it'll, it won't be good. So I'm gonna show you how to add color, okay? Remember, this side is going to be cool colors, this side's going to be warm colors. So we're only gonna choose our cool colors, our purples, our greens, and our blues for this side. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna get my blue marker and I'm just going to kind of outline with a thick outline around my edges. It doesn't have to be really perfectly perfect. Just do the best you can around the edges. Going around. I think I'll make it a little thicker because I want a little more blue. 
and what's going to happen when you add the water is almost like magic. It's going to just turn that magic marker into paint. It will look like watercolor. So you see I kind of have an outline of my blue. Then I'm going to get my brush and my water. If you don't have a brush, you could try using a Q-tip. So I've got water on my brush. Sometimes if it's really, really wet, there'll be a lot of water dripping off. Just kind of drag it on the side and get some of that water off. And then you just get it in that blue, dip it in that blue, and then just start dragging it across. And you see how it's turning into watercolor now. Isn't that pretty? So when your brush starts to get dry and scratchy, you need more water. You don't want too much water. You don't want big puddles on your paper. Just drag it, make sure you're getting in that blue or whatever color you chose. And it'll turn it into paint. You can fill that whole area in. Okay, so you just paint that in. Now in a minute, we're gonna add pattern, but you have to let this dry first. So if you're at home, you could use a hair dryer and that would make it dry faster. But I'm just gonna show you how to do something else and while I'm letting that dry. So if you don't have this good thick watercolor paper and you just wanna use regular copy paper, you can color in your areas with crayons and markers. So if you're doing that, you need to start by making your pattern first. So I'm going to use purple this time and I'm gonna make a pattern. I'm going to make dots like polka dots. And so a pattern, remember, is just a line, shape, color, that you repeat over and over again. So I'm going to fill this shape with dots. You would use your marker first on this because crayons are made of wax and a marker will not, a, a washable marker, like a Crayola marker will not draw over a wax. So you wanna use the marker first for this. Then, I'm gonna use my purple crayon and go over it. You can just color right over those marker dots. When you're coloring, start at one side and go across. See how I'm going across? I'm going in the same direction. I'm going up and down. You don't wanna go scribble scrabble or it'll look very sloppy. So I'm going up and down and my color will look nice and even. When you get all the way across, go back to the other side and do it again until you have filled that whole area. Just try to make sure you're going in the same direction. And make sure you're just doing cool colors on this side, remember. Okay? Now, by now, this is getting almost dry. So if you're using this technique where you use the water, then you can go back after it's dried and add your pattern there. So remember, just cool color, so I wouldn't put red, I wouldn't put yellow. I'm gonna pick another cool color. I think I'll pick this turquoise blue color. This is a cool color. And I'm gonna make stripes that go vertically. That means up and down. So you can just go in right over where you did your marker paint. Just make sure it's dry and you can make stripes and see that's our pattern. Okay. So you will go in and do all of these. You can do a combination of where you use your water with your markers and crayons and markers and some, because it's good to have lots of variety. So you do this however you want. Just make sure you have cool colors here and warm colors here. Let me show you two more things that I want you to do. This is my finished one. So you can, if you made lips, you can have the warm lips on that side. That's okay, because when we think of lips, we think of warm colors, and then I put a cool color here where the eye is. But all the rest of it needs to stay cool on this side and warm on this side. And then after you go in and do all of your coloring on here, you'll need to take your Sharpie again, or you can take your black magic marker, and you will need to make your lines thicker. Let's see if I can show you. See how these black lines on this one are very thin? but they're very thick here. They look really nice when you make them good and thick. It makes everything really stand out and, and pop and look good. So after you've done all your coloring, I would go back with my Sharpie. You may have a fat Sharpie, a fat tip Sharpie that you could use. 
and I would just make my lines thicker. You just go back over them. Everywhere you have a black line, you would make it thicker and fill it in. Take your time, make it look really good and neat. And once you get those lines really thick, it'll look more like that and they'll really stand out. So I hope that your parents will email me what you've done. I can't wait to see if your parents will send me an email. I can put it on Artsonia and uh, maybe save some stuff from the art show, the Gumtree Art Show. Anything you submit to me for the Gumtree Art Show, though, you will get back next year. So please do that. Please let me know what you're doing. Email me if you have any questions. Thanks so much. Bye, guys.